I want to take my drone. <laughs> just toss it out. It'll be fine. <laughs> Skydiving? I think it just decreases that barrier of what fear really is. If you're capable to do something, fear will still hold you back, even though it's like really not that risky. So I like to think of filming as in like impactful moments. As soon as you flick and you see the whole grandness of the Twin Towers and all the lights like gleaming up at you, it's like, it's just euphoric. What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode. This is the Creating to Create podcast. My name is Ben Glentz, and today I'm really excited because we're recording from Chicago, Illinois. The last two episodes were recorded on the other side of the planet, which is kind of mind-boggling to think about. And so it's cool to be safe and sound back in the United States and recording episode six. I'm really excited for today. If you're a new listener here, we're excited that you're here. Um, our goal is just to spark conversation, ask questions, um, just speak truth and share encouragement to whoever's listening. We're created to create by God, by the ultimate creator, and we believe that's for a purpose. What is that purpose necessarily? Well, that's what we're here to talk about, and hopefully our guest today, Ty Rogers, is able to shed some light on that, so much more, and we're able to just like chop it up and, and have a good time. So, Let's dude, welcome it. to the show. Thank you. Yeah, dude, <laughs> I'm stoked to be on it. So you've been around the globe, been to some cool places, done some cool things. You're an engineering student turned FPV drone pilot and a video creator. Traveled to 15 countries so far across the globe. You worked on projects for companies like Canon, DJI, and more. Even flown your drone at concerts for the likes of the Chainsmokers, 21 Savage. You're an adrenaline junkie, jumping out of airplanes, off cliffs, riding motorcycles, Dude, life seems to be like an absolute roller coaster for you. Like, how do you manage? Yeah, well, first, I appreciate you just building me up like that. Because <laughs> yeah, when you put it on paper, I'm like, whoa, that's crazy, bro. That's me? Yeah, um, it is, bro. The Tyler that's, Rogers that's crazy. in the house. Um, yeah, I mean, because I view my life like I just I kind of just chase what I'm excited about. Yeah. So it's if it's, you know, engineering at the time, I'm going to go do engineering. But mm -hmm. I was like, ah, uh, it's like kind of the normal path. Like I want to try something new. So that was like where the travel thing came in. And then the yeah. drones kind of like blended with my love of video and engineering. Cause you have to like learn how to solder and do that whole thing. And that just kind of keeps stacking, you know, motorcycles, skydiving, traveling. It just gets crazier and crazier. At that yeah. Point. You just keep going. Yeah. You never stop, bro. Yeah. feels <laughs> like it. <laughs> but you didn't actually quit college. Like some people like me, um, you finished college. You, you are, and you have an engineering degree. You can yeah. go get a job if you want high paying job. It's weird. Cause it's like, I knew I never wanted to be an engineer. I was like a freshman, sophomore in college. I was like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. But I was, I don't want to say trapped in that mindset of like, you're with the people that are on the normal path of life. So you just yeah. kind of assume that's, you know, the, the, yeah. the typical, right? <laughs> and you see that there's other options out there, but you don't really know what that means yet. So it was kind of this whole long journey of like, well, I'll do school. Cause I do, I think like an engineer, I actually don't really think I'm that creative to be honest. I, th I think I'm pretty logical in, a, <laughs> in that way. So um, yeah, it just kind of at some point over the years was like, okay, let me like step into this different lifestyle that I've always wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's even a prime example, though, of like I, I always talk about and I always kind of argue, you could say that everybody is creative in their own right. Mm -hmm. And some people choose to do that on a massive level or make a career out of it. Other people's don't. But we're all we all have that within us. Mm -hmm. And you're an example of someone who you say that you're not creative, but you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. You wanted to make it a big part of your life and you found ways to do it. And how do you do that? consistency you just practiced you learned skills and you put your mind mm. to it and i think that goes to show like everybody has that creative inside of them it's just like what are you doing to bring that out of you and yeah. how is it manifesting right there's so many different creative skills out there mm -hmm. you know it's not just photography or art or music you know you're soldering a piece of machinery <laughs> together and then launching it through the sky at <laughs> high rates of speed with expensive cameras on it yeah it's pretty creative if you ask me. It's fair. Yeah. yeah. And I actually like looking back, I see that engineering is actually hyper creative in its own route. Very, I just, at yeah. the time, I think was just young and naive. <laughs> so. Well, it made you make a huge jump, made you chase life 
Yeah. Um, like I said, like it seems like you're an adrenaline junkie. You're always chasing something. Mm. You skydive. You have your skydiving Dude. license. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Why? Why skydiving? So, I was shooting with the drone. Somebody uh, actually base jump off a paramotor. So if 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 a you're not familiar, really? yeah. So they they. This dude with like a, a big fan on his back and like just like carries up another dude. Like it sounds like so reckless and it kind of was. It just like drops it like an egg. Yeah, like he was just like there's like a two seater paramotor, so they go up and like this other dude has a parachute. He's literally like he like climbs down. He's hanging. He's like literally hanging on the bottom of this like big <laughs> like <laughs> fan insane. parachute in the sky, and then um, and then he like just like drops and then you know like does a flip and all the all the cool stuff and like that's so cool and he's actually was working at the the drop zone i was in hawaii at the time yeah he's working at the skydiving place in hawaii and i was like dude you should just you should jump because i'm about to go to work and like i was like well it's now or never and then once i did once i was like i I, i'm hooked yeah (laughs) i gotta get the license (laughs) what was the feeling like that first time just kind of falling out of the plane um it was it was a rush for sure, but honestly, it was more peaceful than I expected. Really? Yeah. Once you once you're out of the plane, it's just you don't even feel like you're falling. You're just kind of like this is like kind of bliss, you know? It's yeah. kind of like you overcame this like life challenging fear, and it was like ah, oh, like you could do anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, it was my your stomach does flip though. Oh, I was sure. not ready for that. Well, does your stomach flip, or do you flip around your stomach? Both. You know what? My <laughs> stomach actually only flipped when I did tandem. It's never flipped otherwise. But really? the first time I was not expecting the stomach flip because I was told like it doesn't happen, but it does. Only on tandem. Yeah. Why <laughs> do you think that is? Because you don't like have total control over you jumping out of the plane or? Yeah, I think it has to do with the way you fall because like on a roller coaster, if you're, well, you're falling faster, right? With two yeah. people, more weight, yep. like you, you pierce through the air. So For I'm sure. thinking that's what it has to do with because I'm like super light. I fall really slow. So it's like I never... You know, I just kind of like glide down this, the, they call it the slide, like the wind and whatever. And then you're just like, ah, I'm just Dude, floating. I would drop like a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would like it. You want to get your license. Oh, I you? want to. I want to yeah. jump out of an airplane. Oh, it's literally I, I don't know why I still ever. haven't, you know, because everybody always does that. Like, oh, like it's my birthday. I'm going to go jump out of an airplane. And mm. it's weird because I have such a large desire to do that exact thing. It's just never like, I don't know, been something where I'm just like, okay, today's the day. But I know that's coming. And I think the reason I've held off is because I know I'm going to have the same feeling that you did. Yeah. Like, I'm going to jump out and I'm going to be like, I want to get my license now in a week. <laughs> I want to jump the rest of my life. Yeah. And I know that that's going to have like massive implications on other things in my life. So <laughs> I'm like kind of waiting. I, I know that there's a possibility of never doing it again or never doing it at all. But I want to take that risk and just like. Yeah. go all in when if I do. If you're around so, LA enough, I'm sure you'll. Yeah, it I'm sure I will. I have friends yeah. that do it, and yeah. uh, friends that like jump out of hot air balloons and stuff. I'm like, so cool. oh my gosh, but it's it's crazy. What was what was something you learned about yourself doing that type of thing? <sighs> Skydiving. Mm, I think it just decreases that barrier of of what fear really is. Okay, where it's it's almost like a facade, right? So fear is. If if you're capable to do something, like fear will still hold you back, even though it's like really not that risky. So the main draw with um, the main point I'm making with skydiving is like the parachute is actually like really safe. Like yeah. I've packed my own parachute and I don't know how to pack a parachute. There's like strings <laughs> hanging out of this thing. <laughs> so bad. And you still don't die. Yeah. Like you jump out and it's like, oh, I don't even need to like use my backup parachute, which like... <laughs> It you just get to the bottom like, of the ground, and you're like, oh, this is spaghetti, not yeah, actually a screen. It's just <laughs> twisted, and like, I'm like, all right, I'm getting dragged around on the ground. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think it's just like your mind will hold you back, but it's capable of like so much more than you think. Okay. Yeah. And then when you think it's capable of more, it's capable of even more. So it's just kind of that nonstop. Does that like translate into other things in life too? Does Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Like moving to LA was like that, you know, taking that risk out of engineering was probably like the first big one that I did, mm-hmm. you know, it was, um, you're afraid. You don't know what life is actually like out there. I bought a one way to Hawaii and I knew like one person, you know, <laughs> it's like, Oh, I know how to fly a drone. I don't know anything about the business of video. I don't know anything about that. I've been building those skills, but like tangibly, I have no idea what's going on. You know? Yeah. And most of the world is a social environment too. So yeah. if you're not even in that or you haven't been in that, you know, depending on who you meet, you could get, chopped up and dumped in the trash yeah so it's definitely a big risk yeah 
props to you for taking that. Hey, thanks. Yeah, of course. Okay, now, you jumped off a cliff, <laughs> and you flew your FPV drone around yourself as you fell to the ground. Not by yourself. You were tandem for this one. Mm-hmm. Why? Because, uh, no, I don't think anyone's <laughs> done it. <laughs> I, it started with, so I did two months in Europe, and I I had projects built around FPV, like places I wanted to fly and yep. things I wanted to like film. Yeah. And one of those was base jumping. Cause I had a friend that was like, Hey, I'm going to be in Italy base jumping this date. And I'm like, Oh, I'm going to be in Europe. Perfect. I'll come out and film it. And then I was like, I had this thought before and I was like, Oh, I wonder if there's like tandem base jumping. I was like, I wonder, and it was in Utah. They do have it. And I was like, I wonder if I could like fly around myself while I do it. Cause I just, I'm like, I like the idea of just like, pushing past you know mm-hmm. what i'm afraid of yeah. right so it's like i have my skydiving license so i'm comfortable with parachuting and falling i've filmed parachuting like in, in skydiving yep. and base jumping and whatnot so i'm like why don't i just combine the two yeah essentially and um so i asked him i said hey is there going to be like is there like a tandem option and then he's like yeah and he passed me that the contact of this like world famous base jumper like crazy talented like awesome <laughs> dude jumps for red bull probably yeah I, he's, he's all over the place but yeah, so I was like, hey, I hit him up. I was like, hey, can I like fly our dr- my drone around us while we jump? And he's like, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> like, we can figure it out. I love that energy, man. I love I love when you bring like an insane idea to somebody uh-huh. and they just match it. And they're like, yeah, that's yeah. not crazy at all. That's normal. Yeah. You know, yeah. when the rest of the world is like, you're an idiot. Oh, my gosh. Do you know? There's so many times I've been told no. So many times. Yeah. And it's just like, I just, you can't listen to it anymore. It's like, if, if they're going to tell you no, ask somebody else. Because it's yep. like, you'll find somebody that like shares in the vision. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's, but yeah. And it's like, this ride the like, fine, the fine line of like, no. And like, you really shouldn't do this. There's massive implications, massive, yeah, like, of course. you know, yeah. but repercussions. But I mean, you're not going to get in trouble for flying a drone around yourself. Right. The, maybe the most you'll do is lose the drone. Lose yeah. the GoPro, pass out on the way down. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro, I did. I passed out. You, oh, no, really? Yeah, no, I did. I actually passed out, yeah. <laughs> okay, so For how long, dude? You're flying a drone. That didn't drop? No, it, like, flipped out of control. I had, I, okay, so I'm, <laughs> let me just back up and explain the whole story. Yeah, dude. So it's, like, early in the morning, out. and this is, like, after two months of nonstop filming, and I'm exhausted. I'm yeah. probably sick at this point. I don't remember because I was just pushing through, but... um. Yeah, I'm, so I'm walking. I have to like walk a mile to get to this place because it's like kind of in like northern Italy where there's not really much going on. Yeah, there's not a lot up there. Just a bunch of old people. Yeah, and base jumpers. Yeah, and <laughs> so I'm like walking in the morning, and I'm like, oh, I should have ate something, but I'm running late. <laughs> and then I get there, and he's like, hey, by the way, there's a bike race. Something's going on where we have to actually hike up to the top. We can't just drive. And I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> so, so by the time you get to the top, yeah, you're just- no, halfway through the hike, I was like. I, I stopped and I just took a break. I was on this like luscious grass hill. And I'm like, this is such a beautiful scene. I wish I could enjoy it. So I looked at the mountains and they're like warbling. Like they were literally, I was like, those should not be moving <laughs> in the distance like that. And I'm like, this is not a good idea. So, but I was already like committed, you know, I'm like, I'm already going. So I was like, I'm tandem. Like it's safe enough. Like he'll, he'll land us if, we, if he needs to. Like, <laughs> and we hope so. Yeah. So, I get up to the, the top, he does the briefing, I'm like a little woozy, and we step on the edge of the cliff, and I'm blind, mind you, the whole time. Literally yeah, you're wearing from, the goggles. From yeah. jump to like my feet touch the ground, I'm blind. Because you're holding the FPV, right? No, I set up the FPV on the side, and then I okay. took off right before we jumped. So I'm okay. staring at myself third person on this cliff, and I'm like, yeah. what am I about to do? <laughs> <laughs> I should have ate something. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, all right, well, we're just going to go all out. So I tried to do this like flick shot like over me and when I, when we jumped and then that it felt like a video game at first. But then when I jumped tandem, my stomach started to flip and then my eyes rolled and I, was, I remembered like where I was because I'm like I'm yeah. detached from myself when I'm in the yeah. drone. And then all of a sudden I'm just well, <laughs> my like hands just start to like, you know, go down with the controller and the controller like the drone like literally mm-hmm. flipped. And the parachute comes out right away, so like, thank God. And we. So then you're like jerked back. Yeah. So into... I'm like, whoa, like jerked back to consciousness. Yeah. And I'm like, where are we? And I, all I see is just like mountains with the drone. So I'm like, 
like i know we're floating thousands of feet in the air but i'm like trying to find us for yeah. what felt like 10 seconds <laughs> but what felt like 10 minutes but it was probably like 10 seconds and uh and eventually found us and then was able to like fly around the parachute get some good footage and stuff yeah. but <laughs> and it looks sick it's quite it the experience epic. Yeah, yeah it's quite the experience yeah well that's not the first time you've been doing something extreme in the air and thrown something out either <laughs> you have a reputation i, I don't know if yeah, you know dude. this I, I guess so <laughs> that is that's what put me on the map actually was the, the helicopter stunt in hawaii yeah in hawaii you just chucked it out yeah i was like started going yeah i actually did it twice there's two drones in there oh two okay and we threw one out and there's the first one was like it was like gold i tossed yeah. it out and it locked like right on the helicopter perfectly into like an orbit like it was like yeah i was like <laughs> like as I was flying, my mouth was just <laughs> wide open. I was like, "This is not real!" Like I'm just. Like, and you can see that, by the way, in the video. Oh for, yeah. So for you watching on YouTube, I'll put the link down below. Watch that. Uh, it's insane, crazy story surrounding it. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, and I don't have to go into the whole detail of it, but um, yeah, that was that was crazy. The, honestly, the funny thing about that one is is how it came together on the front. This was this was a huge learning lesson. Yeah. And because this was in the early days before I met L.A. people, before yeah. I was like working with like crazy brands and all yep. that. Like I was just a kid with a drone out like with a dream, you know. And, and again, you're asking someone who's operating a hundred thousand or that hundred thousand dollars worth of machinery to pop a drone out yeah. there and risk it going through a propeller, doing whatever. Yeah. And they yeah. were chill. They were so chill. And it's this crazy. they should not have been because yeah. it's crazy. OK, Um <laughs> I, the whole story is somebody found my drone in a waterfall, a famous yep. YouTuber, mm-hmm. and I wanted to say thank you. So I was like, oh, like, why don't I give them like a cool experience? Cause like giving them money was just kind of like, I feel like that was first level, you know, like I want to like do something cool sure. and, and make like, it more know, personal win-win. as yeah, well. Cause they're like, vloggers as well. So yeah. it's like, give them a cool experience. So I was like, well, why don't I take them? to the same waterfall but you can you can only see the top from a helicopter so i was like well why don't i just take them in like a helicopter ride to the same waterfall and yeah I like, and i was laying in bed that night i was like why don't i like throw the drone out of the helicopter <laughs> <laughs> wait i don't know where that thought yeah what are you what are you eating bro dude what hawaii you... <laughs> like was like too many poke bowls up here no, you're dude. just like you know what i'm just gonna because that eat it i'm life. gonna eat it outside <laughs> and i'm gonna fly it, it. <laughs> There's this line in the video. Again, watch it. There's this line in the video where you're about to hop on the helicopter and you just start like screaming out of excitement and you're saying, Oh my gosh, like this is wild. I've spent months, years in my basement dreaming of this moment, like working on my craft. I can't believe I'm about to do this. Yeah, bro. How does that feel? <laughs> like Dude, that's crazy. It's surreal. I mean, <laughs> especially in that moment, I'm like with somebody in the industry that I've, you know, social media that I cared about for so long. And then I'm going on this crazy adrenaline adventure, which is like what I'd like love to do. And I'm, I'm in this season of life where it's like just full send and taking every risk I can. Mm -hmm. And everything seems to be like going great. You know, it was just the perfect, sweet, I don't know. It was pinnacle culmination of moments. Yeah. But it's beautiful. But how that actually came to be, was I was like, I'm going to throw it out of the helicopter. And the next day, I, I told a couple friends about it. I told the dude, one of my the dudes filming it. Mm-hmm. I was like, hey, I need somebody to film this if this happens. And he's like, no way that's going to happen. But I was like, <laughs> all right, we'll see. And then I told another friend, and then the same thing. She's like, no. Like, and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm not telling anybody else. Like, this is, yeah. this is my dream. I'm not, like, letting somebody stamp it out. So I took, I was on a Honda Grom. I was like bare bones in hawaii like literally just bought like the tiniest motorcycle because i want to learn how to ride a motorcycle it's another thing but um i was just like this like tall lanky guy on this like little tiny bike like driving an hour into honolulu just like yeah i'm just gonna go to the helicopter places and ask that was yeah. my plan that was yeah. literally what i did and it took three and as crazy as that sounds i will validate you in that that's probably the best way to do things. Yeah. Even like in a situation where you're asking something crazy. Yeah. Because if someone can see your face, even That's see so your true. excitement about something, yeah. even if they're on the fence about like letting you do that or not, they're going to be more apt to tell you yes if they can see you right in the in front of their face yeah. instead of like an email or even a phone call. Yeah. And I also knew that the, the timeline was like I was pushing time because Shane, the, the Shanger Danger, shout out. He, want, <laughs> um, 
he wanted to do an interview with me because like he found the drone he yeah. wanted to like return yeah. it and do it for his channel i was like okay well i have a surprise right after so i had like a week to like figure out what to do and how to make this work so it was that monday i was like all right i'm gonna drive into town and go to these helicopter places the first one it was funny bro i was like giving like a little like ted talk to like the whole crew because they're like what do you want to do <laughs> and then i was like i want to take my drone <laughs> And, and just, yeah, out just toss it out. Just go to the, the waterfall. It'll be fine. <laughs> and obviously, I'm not that casual about it. You have to, like, yep. really bring, like, a professionalism, you know, and talk the talk, of course. Yeah. Um, but they, they were hesitant. And I was like, hey, no worries. Like, let me know if you, if you want it. I was like, and they're like, all right, we'll let you know. I was like, all right, that's a no. So I just, like, moved to the next to the next. And I stopped at Magnum Helicopters. And they shoot for, like, Magnum PI. Like, oh, wow. I did not know this at the time. I just, like saw that it was a helicopter that makes place. it even more crazy right so yeah. and they're doing stunts with like flying under power lines and stuff so like if i did research i mean i lucked out on this one but like if i did research that would have been where i first went to because yep. they're open to stuff like that yeah right? they got so, the reputation yeah yeah so i walk in and you kind of had to i had to dance with it you know like at yeah. this point i'm like hey, the first one thought i was crazy so the second one i'm gonna like ease into it and mm -hmm. i was like hey uh, can I just modify like one of your tours? I just, I just want to take a doors off tour just straight to the waterfall and back. You know, I just want to do it for like this famous YouTuber, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, we can give you a discount because, you know, attention yep. online, blah, 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 the whole thing. I'm like, great, one more thing. And then that's when I brought up the drone thing and you have to talk about, you know, just the, the <laughs> implications of it. And then they get their higher ups and then they're yep. like, well, like, how do, what, what frequencies are you operating on? You got to answer all the questions or yep. whatever. And then just turn into like, all right, I'll see you Friday. And I'm like, Bro, how did that even happen? I just go That's home on my nuts. little scooter. <laughs> <laughs> bro, go get a poke ball. <laughs> yeah, bro. Just stay hype. And then, yeah, went back that Friday. And um, the rest it, is history. It, yeah, the rest is history. It all worked out. It's insane, bro. Yeah. And and the footage looks incredible, yeah, I might you. say. Yeah, thank just you. seeing from that point of view, just it drop out of the helicopter and then in a split second, take control of it and the whole world opens up. You just yeah. see the helicopter, the waterfall. It's yeah, yeah. it's crazy, bro. It's Props so to you. Nice. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Of course, dude. I mean, it was a lot of luck and God and outside circumstances, but yeah, I was just willing to take the risk. Well, honestly. you've had a, quite a few moments like that. We've already talked about too, but what's it like first putting FPV goggles on and seeing the world through that lens? Yeah, seeing things that you normally can't even see, like you know, as humans because we don't have the capability to fly, obviously. Yeah, yet. <laughs> um <laughs> like what's that like bro and specifically in like i i remember you flying in uh kuala lumpur and malaysia and the twin towers there and like flying around the second largest second tallest building mm -hmm. in the world never feels quite real honestly and a lot of times i'm dealing with a lot of stress and pressure because i'm in these situations where like a jeep like a, a fpv drone will just cut out of the sky if you don't know what you're doing like if you lose signal yeah it just drops there's no return to home unless you can put a gps on it but like i've crashed and broken enough where it's like it's hard to GPS get to them sometimes it? yeah where's like, it gonna fall you don't know yeah so you, it's, you're not tracking the ground most of the time as you're right flying. so but as soon as you go up in the air and like like there's the the moments i like to to think of filming as in like impactful moments yeah right so it's like as soon as you flick and you see the whole grandness of the twin towers and all the lights like gleaming up at you it's like it's just euphoric yeah. like it's happened like at concerts i've had that too where i'm just like i'm so stressed i'm like yeah. so like like i'm not even enjoying the music it's so bad but then like as soon as i go up it's like i forget where i'm at yeah and i'm just like i'm like on stage with them and like orbiting around yeah. and like wow this is great like life is fantastic <laughs> isn't it crazy how we can experience that as humans the it's ups nuts. and downs the flows yeah. of the emotion and yeah. the ability to like instantly instantly be put at peace yeah. by something visual something auditory yeah. blows my mind that our human brain like works like that <laughs> doesn't make any sense and that like the imperfect nature of who we are as humans and of course like the sinful world we live in mm -hmm. causes us to have emotions that are negative mm -hmm. but then we're able to reel it back with just the most simple things in life yeah and just like experience complete peace yeah i think that's the beauty of like god as well in our relationship with jesus is because he is complete peace he is the prince of peace mm -hmm. and so being in his presence is like the most simple thing but you're just like yeah nothing in this world could hurt me right now yeah you know but no, dude, yeah, you're insane, right dude. on with that it's yeah. crazy <laughs> 
it honestly doesn't make any tangible sense. And my engineering side is like, like I want to figure it out, but I'm just like, you know what? At this point, I'm just going along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. Some things you don't need to. Yeah. You know, that's true. I think it makes it better too. Cause if you knew everything about it and you knew like why you were having this feeling, like, yeah, it kind of takes the magic be, out of it. Yeah. 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 But, <laughs> yeah. That's insane, bro. Well, I mean, keep doing that and keep like pursuing FPV because you're obviously talented at it. Thank you, and bro. yeah, you're blessing a lot of people with the imagery. You're blessing me with the imagery. I love oh, watching brother. it. So stop yeah. it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep creating, bro. Keep keep being original. On that topic, though, uh, really quick, I want to get your hot take on creative trends because okay. uh, on social media, you you see a lot of people just like copy each other, and there's nothing wrong with copy and inspiration. But creative trends specifically are something where like thousands of people will do the same exact thing with their own twist a little bit, yeah. but essentially follow a formula. What do you think that does for for the creative world? Is that good, bad? I think it depends on your goals in the creative world. Mm -hmm. And I've grown as I've like learned and met a bunch of people pursuing social media and creative endeavors in their own way. It makes sense. You yeah. know, if, if you're in it for building your brand and a business and, and maybe social isn't your focus, you know, you, you want to build your brand, but social is just the avenue, you know, the, the road that you take. It's like, that makes sense. You know, do trends if it's not going to burn you out or like, you know, if it's still kind of like fun for you. But I think as, you know, as creatives and in our community that we have is like, we want to stand out in a way and like that that is what we do is create so it's like if we were to just do the same thing that everybody else is we would feel invalid in a way yeah that's that's at least how i felt um because i've i have some experience like just pursuing trends and i try to do like daily youtube videos because i'm meeting people like shooting for like quantity over quality but it's like it's just the high quality production is my thing so I don't want to follow trends to promote what, you know, like what, what is my product that I'm offering at that point? You know, cause it's like, I met a lot of people in Bali do like travel guides and it's like, oh, that's fantastic. Cause it's like, you want to make it look pretty, but it's like, you can kind of follow the same general format because it's like, you're offering like different opportunities for different places to go. So it's like, you have a product that you're just using video to promote. Video is our product. So it's like we kind of have to do something original and stand out, you know. I don't know if you feel the same way, but that's uh, the I've, conclusion I've that I feel similar. Came to. Yeah, I think you hit the the nail right on the head. And I think as creators, as artists, we're the ones creating those formulas, those trends for everybody else. We should be the trendsetters. Mm. And so I think it is for the creative world, for people that are in it, for the art and are in it to kind of be disruptive. I think it kind of is counterintuitive to just do trends or to mostly do trends yeah so i don't know that that's something i've talked about with a lot of people and uh it's just you know it, it's something that i think we should be conscious of too because you know bringing it back to even our faith you know we're called to steward like our gifts well and i think when you're just following what everybody else is doing and not really being original with your content then you know the deeper question gets begged like are you stewarding well Mm -hmm. Or are you just taking cop outs, taking the easy route? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> but, but you mentioned Bali though. Um, tell me about your time there. Yeah. Um, tell me about like community or, or like, did, were you able to find community over there? Like, what's it like kind of on the other side of the planet? Yes and no. And, and you were just there. So I was, <laughs> yeah. So I asked, so I'm curious on your opinion too, because I, I yeah, probably yeah. have two different perspectives on it, <laughs> but um, yeah, I was able to find the community in a sense where in America, I was able to find people that I connected with, uh, with the same upbringing and same moral code and same whatever. Right. So mm -hmm. it's like as person to person, but as I mentioned before, I kind of wanted out of that, st the regular path of things. And like a lot of my friends like didn't. And so now our lifestyles don't align, but like we as people align. And in Bali, I kind of felt the flip where it's like, it's not crazy to be like, yeah, I just went base jumping and flew FPV around myself. They're like, oh, sick. Like, <laughs> it's a fun weekend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, but like, I felt it was harder to connect on a deeper level as people, like almost like the core was taken out because okay. honestly, 
I mean, I we're Christian, so it's like yep. I think that was a big part of it is just not having that same foundation, and I I think it's a very godless world, like more mm-hmm. than I thought, and it makes me really sad. Yeah. I think people are nice and people are amazing, and I actually. I say I've met better Christians over in Bali <laughs> than I have in America and they're Muslim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it really threw me the for kindness levels. Yeah. Like just bro, the, the so genuine. kindness, like right up front. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, and it's, it's been super eye opening and opened my mind to the point where it's like, you know, like people are people. Like I love yeah. people, yep. you know, and it's, it doesn't matter if you're Christian or not, but there is a, uh, a foundational connection that I, that I seem to have with Christians. So it's like, how do I, how does that work? How do I manage that? You know, where, where does that put me in the scheme of the world now? Cause I feel you have goals within your belief system Mm -hmm. and you have goals to grow closer to the Lord. And I think when it comes to community, you know, there are people that you know, and then there's community and community is very designed by God to be able to uplift you, uplift the people around you, be able to speak into like each other in a way that maybe you couldn't speak into someone who doesn't have that same belief system. Right. And so it's important to have that community, that stronghold yeah. to be able to push you towards your goals. Right. So there is a difference. Um, but no, I agree. Like it's, yeah. it's really interesting to see people that don't have the same, maybe morality based like belief that I do. Mm. Um, but they treat me like better than, some yeah. believers do and and the culture over here is one of being closed off and yeah. sometimes a lot of times closed-minded mm-hmm. and over there there's just this eagerness to like serve this eagerness to be kind to have conversation mm-hmm. um to find middle ground and it, it sometimes like boggles my mind and it, it was definitely eye-opening for me too and i yeah. come back and i'm like how can we do this better here because yeah. that is what Jesus was. Right. Jesus was somebody who walked this earth with imperfect people. And he met s- just such a very wide range of beliefs. And never once did he approach it with closed mindedness. He approached it with truth and he spoke truth, but he didn't approach it with like hate or um, like mistreating of that person. And I think it's so like easy as for, for us to get kind of lost in that in American culture. So I agree with you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, you had a, an interesting thought though. Yeah. When we were talking off camera about how, um, a lot of the people you met were like struggling and like seeking something. Yeah. And it's, it's like, it's tough to even like bring up. Right. Because, um, you know, I care about the people that I met and, um, the hearts that they have are like genuine and it was so good to, kind of like sharing some moments with them but same with you it's like i Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily connect on a deeper level with them Mm -hmm. and i think that's because like i'm in this place where my reason for going over there was to specifically like see friends and see the world Mm -hmm. um but i'm also in a place where i've worked through difficult things in my life and i'm secure in who i am because of what jesus has done for me and it gives me this like you know, this piece that we talk about, this odd piece that we can't explain. And I think when I went over there, um, there was just like much more of like a sense of anxiety in a way, like people were lost looking for something and they went to Bali to look for that. Mm. And to me, it just didn't really resonate with me because I, I don't need to go to Bali to find out that I'm loved by Jesus Mm -hmm. and that I'm secure in who I am. Right. And that like, I have a very specific mission in my life. Um, but a lot of these people for whatever reason that I met just felt like they were running away from something. Mm. If that makes sense. It makes, it kind of makes sense. I feel like that's kind of like the fairy tale Bali paints Mm -hmm. is like this magical land. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Similar to Hawaii. Similar. Very similar. Maybe I'm running from something. Maybe you are, bro. <laughs> Turn this into a well, therapy session. Well, let's talk about though, because you mentioned being like run, truly like doing all these things and kind of chasing after a feeling, as you call it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, like, how did that work out for you? Like, um, where did that kind of lead you 
and when it comes to content creation and traveling the world, um, what did you get out of that? Yeah. Um, it was a wild experience, a wild ride to say the least, to say the least. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and I don't by any means think it's over, but it, the pacing that I was at, I was running a marathon at like a sprint pace. <laughs> <laughs> trying to go sub two over here. First I'm person. Trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, I was just so excited to be out in the <laughs> world and going and like living this crazy adventure life that I've just. Dude, you're like finding of. Nemo, just like swimming through the big yeah, ocean. Bro, like, <laughs> <laughs> you see the big butt. And you're yeah, just like, ah. you got to touch it. You know? <laughs> but <laughs> So, yeah, I was just, I was sprinting, sprinting, sprinting. And I honestly felt it pretty early on where I'm like, yeah, this is not sustainable. (laughs) But it was enough of, like, good things that kept happening. Like, the helicopter thing was like, oh, like, something that hyped me up for a little bit. And then, you know, the the L.A. thing, meeting everybody there and, like, opportunities in L.A. are always, you know, coming up. So it was always, like, something to keep me going. And it wasn't, like, at a dangerous level by any means, like, of, of like, oh, like, I'm done, whatever. And then I did eventually get to a point where I was in Bali, and there was, like, all my trips got canceled, and I was there for, like, a month just, like, trying to edit all this old footage. I have, like, my desktop is, like, cluttered, and I hate it when my desktop <laughs> doesn't have, oh, my gosh. And it just, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm done. I had, mm-hmm. um, yeah, just a couple, just a bunch that just added together, really, over the time, and I was just like, I'm, I'm done. I'm I'm going home. I'm mm. going to rest and pursue like some other creative outlet for now. Like I'll probably come back to video, but if I don't, like it's fine. Like it got that bad. Mm. And why do you think it got to that point? I just I let it realistically cuz it's I'm so cuz a lot of this was just founded on excitement. Right? So I left for Hawaii without a secure job. I worked, you know, I did the, the engineering school and then I worked and saved up a bunch. So like I was smart about it and I was like, okay, well, I don't have to make money yet as I figure it out. And then um, just with freelance, you know, it's just so up and down. Like LA was great, LA was sustainable, but then I left and went to Europe and mm-hmm. Bali and I was like, let me just see how they do it. Let me figure out like how to do it online. Yeah. It's just, it's so up and down that it's like, I'm just trying to like learn for one, how to navigate the world. I've never really been out of the it's country by place. myself. Yeah. And then how to build something on like a new career path on social media. And I didn't realize that it was like all at the same time that it was like too much for me, mm-hmm. but it was definitely like too much. At, like it was just guzzling, you know? Yeah. So if I were to do it again, well, when I do it again, I know it's going to be, I, cause I'm addicted at this point. Uh, what's the importance of dictation of like preparation of pre-production? Oh, of course. So did you prepare for like even that big? Yeah. Stint? The Europe, Europe, I was really prepared. I knew exactly what I wanted to film. I knew what the videos were going to be about. And oddly enough, I never actually made those videos. <laughs> I wonder if it was I was too prepared in a way where I was like thinking about it too much. I also did not give myself enough time to edit at all. Yeah. I literally went from Europe filming every day to Bali. Yeah. And then I was like sick by the end of it because I pushed mm. myself so hard in Europe. Yep. So. Um, and when you're in that place mentally, you can't really even comprehend yeah looking at a screen and like i thinking know creatively especially because this is my first i knew nobody in asia like whatsoever so i was like i am sitting in my villa like i need to meet somebody <laughs> like <laughs> let me just get things rolling here so it just kind of got pushed on the back burner mm-hmm. until i got burnt dang yeah but i mean it's the biggest lesson you learned yeah yeah so it's like you have to, i feel like i had to go through it to learn that pacing and that is my general trend is i like FPV, I spent months just like nonstop learning yeah. it. And then it's like, whoa, that was a lot of information. And then I like back off and then I kind of learn my pacing. But it's yeah. like it gets you good quick. So it's like next time around, like I guarantee you, I'll like have a much better pacing to it. I'll be able to go longer. I'll be like yeah. more thorough, thought out, planned, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, you, you mentioned to me that when you got back here, you just had a massive release of tension and anxiety. Oh my gosh, dude. I literally cried. I bawled. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I was not like, sad boy tie over no, here. No, sad boy hours. No. Yeah. Which is a side that I never really show, to be honest. Yeah. But, um, cause everybody thinks I'm so like vibrant and happy like this, you know, this kind of mode. Mm, and yeah. this is, well, maybe not. I don't know. No, no, you are. But <laughs> I was just going to add to that. And I think like, you know, not many people do show that side of them, yeah. but we are all, all you know, dealing with things. This might be a little 
tangent, but you know, it makes me sad because I don't mind sharing it, but I don't think people want to see it because mm-hmm. unless if it ends happy, they don't want to see it. So when you're going through it, it doesn't like, and I'm, I'm strictly speaking on like social media numbers and metrics. Yeah. Like, which is truth to like what people want to watch. You don't go on Instagram wanting to be sad. Yeah. You know, you want to be happy and stoked for people that you care about and stuff like that. So it's like, I don't mind offering it to people, but it almost has to be after the fact, like now, like now I'm stoked. I'm like, you know, yep. recharged and ready to go. It so has I'll, to be a, or like it. a reflective moment. Yeah. And people are like, oh, like he went through this, but yeah. he's doing great now. Yeah. Cause yeah. then that makes them happy. And it's like, oh, like sick, you made it. And then now yeah. it's like, it's a positive feedback loop. Yeah. So, so I think it's, that's kind of my flow with it. I don't know. Other people might feel otherwise, but. Yeah. yeah, bro, I literally bawled my eyes out. I had so much, like, emotionally pent-up tension that I don't even fully know where it came from, but I just felt suspended for so long. Mm. And I just was, like, finally home. And I was, like, oh, I just, like, let it all out. And I was, like, all right, I'm just going to rest and, like, read and Recoup, heal. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, dude. Yeah, I, I bet that can be a lot, too. I mean, that's crazy to go from essentially 1,000 to zero really quick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's sad, bro, because we were supposed to meet in Bali. I was supposed to see I you there. Know, yeah. bro. I knew still I bummed. just couldn't. I just and couldn't be that the person. It's I needed more to be. important that you went through that and were able to come back and be in yeah. a more stable spot now. Yeah. We're able to kind of see the future and have clarity and stuff. So it's an excuse to go yeah. back. We'll take a trip. Always an excuse. I'll go back to Asia. I don't yeah. mind. <laughs> you just gotta have me in the helicopter when you throw it out next time yeah bro yeah yeah or maybe yeah. we'll skydive together or something yeah we I gotta, should I, I i'll film you skydiving dude honestly when i start skydiving i'm calling you you're coming out and you're filming 100 <laughs> percent. let's do it there's no doubt in my mind could you jump it off a balloon <laughs> <laughs> oh dude talk about dreams I, I think like the things you were expressing with how you felt when you were about to hop in the helicopter and like that is me with jumping out of a hot air balloon. I think yeah. like if I get to do that, um, what do you mean if, bro? Come on, life. You never know, life. I'm I'm an That's optimist, fair. but I'm also a realist, and That's so fair. I always kind of speak to myself in that way. Yeah. Um, not to say that I don't have faith that it will happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always keep it open ended. I yeah. let I let God like handle that, you yeah. know, because at the end of the day, like it's His will and not mine, and like I I would love to do all these crazy things. Yeah. But you never know what life throws at you. You know, so. how do you, as a professional, <laughs> pace yourself? That is something pace that I'm myself. Not, yeah, that's, I have no value to offer for that. I think that's a, that, dude, that's like such a huge topic and I could talk a whole podcast on it. Um, but simply, it's reliance on God. And I think mm. that was the toughest thing for me to even comprehend because when I was first starting out my creative career as well, in a different way, I also burnt myself out Mm. and I was working 70 hours a week doing freelance, working for a tech startup. I was just fully in the zone, but also my mind was not there Mm. (laughs) and I was just mindlessly doing work. And I also on top of that had this huge desire to like just be there for people, pour into people, like build intentional community And that is not sustainable whatsoever. And for me, pacing myself means realizing that God has a plan for every single project that I'm in. He has Mm. a plan for every single person that I come in contact with and that I am not ruling over that plan. And so I don't even get to decide when those happen. I don't get to decide how those happen. All I get to do is like live in them Mm. and steward it when I'm given it and just be like, epic. I'm going to try to do my best here. I'm going to try to treat people as best I can with love. Um, and what, whatever comes of it, like will come of it. Yeah. And I think it's been really cool to live in that. Not perfectly at all, but to learn to live more and more so in that reality and in that way of living. Because bro, like when I tell you how much peace you get from allowing God to dictate even the conversations that you have, it's insane. Like, yeah. it's just like, you do not feel a weight on your chest. You do not feel a weight on your shoulders. Mm-hmm. You just feel absolutely free. And you know that you don't have to worry about it. I would assume you go up and down with that. 
It does go up and down. So I'm how do you not saying I am? Yeah. So how do you when you're on the downs get back to the part where it's like all right, like I'm. It's full reliance on God, bro. It's, yeah. When I am down, I'm not relying on God. When I am down, I am not doing the disciplines in my life and stewarding what I'm given well. And mm. that means I'm not getting up when I should. I'm not spending time in the word, yes. But I'm also <laughs> not even brushing my teeth in the morning. I'm not doing little things in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'm not, um, you know, being intentional with my time and writing down and scheduling out what I'm doing. Um, and so my way of getting back to that is hitting reset, taking a day to go for walks, meet with friends, be still. But then on the back end of that, being intentional and writing down what I need to do and getting back on that train of like, this is a discipline that I have to work every day Um, because it is easy to fall out of, bro. Just one one day where you don't do that Mm. and uh, where I don't do that and I'm just like back in the trenches. So, Yeah. yeah. But that's a whole other thing. I mean, speaking of like Sabbathing and like taking intentional rest, like that's something that I'm working towards right now as well. And um, something I really want to implement in my life. So it is so important to like kind of like reset yourself and rest because that's what the Lord did, you know, and he invites us into that. He invites us to be a part of that. He invites us to be a part of the work and cultivating the earth. And I think that's such a special place to be in. And like, what an honor for us to do that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So it almost comes down to like a routine. A routine, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a relationship. Like, it's a routine. Yeah. Just like everything, like you work at it consistently. And that was yeah. one of the biggest lessons I've learned over the last three years. It's just like, you can't run 100 miles an hour and then, and then stop, stop and then run 100 miles an hour and then stop. And, you know, you learn that in a massive way mm-hmm. as well. And it's just like, you just got to be consistent with it. Mm-hmm. So. But yeah, man, it's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. So it's cool that you're on kind of the back end of that now and working to something else and, yeah, you know, we'll diving deep into what you're going to do next and yeah. like having clarity about that. So yeah, that's sick, bro. I'm really excited for you and I'm really excited for like, thanks, bro. Yeah. The trajectory, the trajectory, <laughs> yeah, the trajectory, the trajectory. The projected trajectory. The projected. Did I just <laughs> no. make a new word? No. Yeah. The yeah, projectory. No, no. You engineered. It's a. I'm an engineer. It's a word. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Well, thank you so much for coming on, man. It's a bro. blessing. Yeah. Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah. Always bro. great conversation. <laughs> Always, dude. Yeah. Always. Guys, if you haven't shared this with someone and you know someone by name that you know would benefit from this podcast and benefit from hearing from people like Tyler and the things that he's gone through in life and the ways that God has shaped and molded him, drop that link to somebody. Send it. Let's go, baby. Drop a like. (laughs) (laughs) Like, comment, subscribe. (laughs) Also, follow Ty. He's amazing. You'll see some incredible FPV work and more. And just fun stories. You tell a lot of really – you are a good storyteller. I will say that. So, um, yeah, go watch the Kuala Lumpur fpv video i'll drop it in the link it's so so good thanks bro dude thank you bro peace peace now would be a good time to do a voiceover about why i'm doing what i'm doing i love risk and when i came to malaysia i had no idea if any of this was going to be possible But I figured if I could pull it off, it would yield tremendous inspiration. This location isn't significant. I just had some time to kill. Okay. And if I took enough risk and layered on as much stress as I could take, I mean, the quality, the strength of that inspiration can change someone's life.